Hey, God bless you, my friend. Today, I want to give you the reason why it seems to us that God hides from us. God is so revealed, but yet he is so mysterious. And even though, my friend, many of us that, that, that love him and we seek after him, there are times where we say, God, where are you? I need you. Where are you, God? And I believe, my friend, that God, because he has allowed nature alone to testify. The Bible even tells us in the book of Romans, Paul wrote it in one of his letters, one of his epistles, that nature alone testifies of God's handiworks. His handiworks are all around. And I want you to understand, my friend, when you are going through tests and trials, in particular, deep trauma and, 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 and where your soul, you can't even explain what you're feeling at times. I want to encourage you to understand that God allows us to come to those places when we will not yield to him. And when we do... The tendency of man, which is the reason why many of us, we got to be careful in this hour of technology because there is so many people who are saying that they, they're having all these dreams and meeting God and seeing Jesus. But my friend, you got to be careful because God, he will sit back because he does not want us to mishandle him the way we do human beings, one to another. So God, my friend, he's, he's not going to allow us to become that familiar with him. Familiarity does breed contempt. Follow me, my friend, because if you don't understand how God operates at times and how God would just sit back, it's not that he's not near. It's not that he doesn't care because he does. But God, my friend, will not allow you and I to mishandle him. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, my friend. And as the deer pants, this is what one of the psalmists wrote, as the deer pants, he wants our soul to pant after him. That's, you know, the deer is thirsty. And when you're thirsty, that means that I'm dehydrated. I need hydration. And hydration, the Bible tells us that the word of God, it's like the washing of the word, that God will wash over the soul. He'll wash over the mind and the thoughts of man through his word. His word brings life. It brings light. So we got to understand that the true word is Christ. And my friend, I want you to hear me now that, that when you are going through seasons where it's like, God, where are you? You must understand. He told Jeremiah, if you seek me, Jeremiah chapter 29, he said, uh, verse 11 through 13, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. And remember what Jesus told us, the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave us. He said, love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. In other words, my friend, when you are trying to see, you have to sometimes put on eyeglasses because you can't see. And without intimacy, you cannot see. God is saying many of us, we're so confused and perplexed at times because listen, sometimes this type of lens just ain't enough and we have to adjust and be willing to go get some more. <laughs> if I got to go get some more glasses because that prescription ain't working, I can't say. <laughs> I need some bigger lens. Come on. God said, okay, so what you used to do to find me ain't working. Now you done switched your eyeglasses. <laughs> Got you some jumbo wares. <laughs> 
If that ain't working, my friend, then you want to go ahead and get them binoculars. God, where I need, I can't see. Come on. Friend, whatever it takes to increase your time seeking him, so be it. Because God does not want us to take for granted he is God. And that's why he will not allow man to mishandle him. And with this point, my friend, let me be very clear to you. Because you have people who are being devoured on social media. And these primarily are young prophets and prophetess. All they're telling you is what dream they had. I mean, they're popping up on there every hour, every day with a new. And and the thing that's most disturbing, I find it very disturbing. They're speaking like breaking news. What God just told me, they're making it like it is literally breaking news. It is so carnal, so misleading, so really devilish. Oh, yes, it's devilish, my friend, because you must hear me. God will not allow us to become that familiar with him. So when you have or you're following some young prophet or they could be an older prophet too and they're telling you every other day and they're forecasting, they're forecasting, my friend, the word for the month, the word for the week, friend, shut it down. Don't listen to them. That's a mess because if God is talking to you all like that, it ain't the true and living God. God is not going to allow us, my friend, when it comes to the supernatural, because we cannot verify your dreams. We cannot verify your visions. That's why we cannot, my friend, go chasing after all of these wonders, talking about the third heaven. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Even Paul said he experienced things that he didn't even want, and he didn't talk about it. Oh, we got to be, we got to be careful, my friend. The Bible tells us, look at this in Exodus chapter 33, Moses said, God, show me your glory. He said, I can't do that. Can't nobody see me and live. But if you get over in the cleft of that rock, I'll let you catch my backside. But if I show you me, you got to come out of that bodysuit. Now, now I don't know if what God was really saying is, I'm so glorious and so God, it just might kill you. You can't even handle this type of majesty and, and, and glory for real. You, It will kill you. So now here we are. In the 21st century with all of this technology and everybody got a vision and a dream every other day. Talk about they seen God, they saw, friend, if that's you, you gotta, you gotta shut that thing down and go get quiet and ask God to shut your soul off to close that portal. Because if you're constantly having all these supernatural, I already did a warning for dreamers, but what am I saying by the spirit of Christ? Now, listen, my friend. The supernatural cannot be verified. That's why we have to be careful with all these dreams folks say they have it and all these uh, prophetic visions that we can't. We must be vigilant and sober. In Exodus chapter 33, God said, Moses, I can't show you me. So friends, God desires that you understand some of you, you got to up your game of intimacy because without intimacy, you can't see. The Bible says this, the word of God is a lamp. It's a light to our path. And friend, when you are feeling perplexed and your mind is just constantly tormenting you, oh friend, God's saying, I can't stabilize you till you get you some lens. You got to put back on your spiritual eyes and tune in your ear, your spiritual ear, so you can hear what the spirit will say to you. It's time to get quiet, my friend, because without intimacy, you're blind. You cannot see. 
And God is saying, I want to give you some binocular vision where you can see beyond your pain. You can see beyond your troubled marriage. You can see beyond your rebellious kids. You can see beyond your homeless situation. You can see beyond the curse of the earth. Oh, my friend. Ain't no shame, my brothers and sisters. God is saying, I need to adjust your lens. Because my friend, if all you see is what's happening in your life, you can miss what God is really saying is going on. Because there's a difference between what's happening and what's really going on. So my friend, there you have it. Why does God seemingly hide from us. He does not want familiarity and he wants you to go deeper. He wants you to come out of that carnality and stop. Listen, my friend, without faith, if you don't stop just everything that you see, that's your indicators. You won't have no faith. So come on, my friends, it's time for us. Where are, look, didn't I tell you in the other video where my eagles at? Where they at? Where they at? Come on, eagles. It's time to look towards the hills from which cometh your help. My help come from God. I'm going higher and I need my lens adjusted so I can see beyond the trouble because I am not coming down off this wall. I'm doing a good work. Come on, friend. That's what the prophet Nehemiah said when those evil men came to bias and Sam Ballot. He said, look, I'm about to sit your paperwork before the Lord. I'm about to drop it before my God. And I'm not coming down off this wall to deal with you. And the Bible tells us he was busy building on one hand and fighting on the other. God said, come on, eagles. Let me adjust your spiritual eyesight that this thing too shall pass. Whatever is this thing in your life, my friend, God said, do not take for granted. I am here. Come on up. Come on up a little higher. I love you, my friend. Till next time, be encouraged.